To talk about just the last series and how you felt your team performed and what you're hoping um, to achieve going into next. Um, yes, our Fresno series. I think our team competed really well. Um, I definitely think we showed, um, you know, a certain level of potential and um, hunger. Um, I'm hoping that we can kind of just build off of that game. Fresno is a really good team. I think we competed with them well, but um, we definitely need to continue to um, learn how to close out games and know that we can win. So I'm hoping this um, series coming up against Wyoming, we can kind of build off that, like I said, and just um, play a complete game together and get a dev. I would have to agree with you. I felt like you guys played um, extremely well up until that, just that last fourth quarter. So how do you improve offensively uh, to get better and just put more points on the board? Mm -hmm. I think it's um, continuing to grow as a team. Like we have a lot of new people. And I think um, like, as you see, like with our previous games, every game we're getting better. So I think just continuing to play hard and practice play hard in the game. I think our shots are going to um, start to fall. Mia, from a player's perspective, how do you balance that? You know, you do come away with losses after this, but you do feel good about some things. How do you balance that, you know, no moral victory standpoint versus, hey, we're getting better every game out there? Yeah, um, it's really just choosing what to focus on. We can't, I mean, if we focus on us not winning, then we'll probably continue not to win. I think um, striving to win is probably a better mindset than coming to practice every day, feeling kind of hopeless so I think um, we've all just been having good energy like we see our potential we see like what happens when we do play well so I think we're all just like ready to um, continue to you know do our best and like I said win. And Nia yeah, with Wyoming coming in if I'm not mistaken since you've been in Nevada I do not believe you've come away with a win against the Cowgirls here with that being said does that just make it that more of a motivation factor uh, uh, to come out on top when they come in here this weekend? Yes, for sure. Um, you know, I, I, I think like during this whole thing, it's like you, you can only get better. Like this year doesn't count, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, this is opportunity. Everyone has an opportunity to be everyone. And I think if we come in, we play our game, we play hard, we play smart, like it'll be a, f a phenomenal opportunity for us to beat them. And yeah, like knowing that we haven't beat them, if we can get it this time, like that's definitely like on our minds. And you look at some of the numbers too with Wyoming, second best scoring defense in the conference, but also the worst scoring offense. How prepared are you, it seems like, for a grind of a game or even two? Mm -hmm. um, I think we're pretty prepared. Like our coaching staff does a good job on our scout. Um, and like some – someone said before like I think our defense is we'll be able to um, stop them I think we'll do well um, I think our offense is what can improve and it has can like been improving so um, yeah I just think like if we if we continue to play good defense and just our, our shots fall we hit our free throws like we'll be able to compete and put ourselves in position to win yeah, how important has it been to just be a leader on this year's team in just such this weird, unusual season being one of the only seniors on the team? Mm -hmm. I think it's um, I think it's really essential just for like team morale. I think um, especially during COVID, sometimes it's, it's easy to kind of like lose sight of the vision or like, you know, um, you, it kind of gets like, you can get easily distracted, I would say. So I think just like, continuing to be present and practice and um, encouraging and just reminding everyone that, you know, we can do this, we can get this done, like, um, you know, anything's possible. I think that's very important. What have your thoughts been on the like Mountain West series so far now that you guys have played a couple of them? Just, you know, how weird is that playing a team, the same team, like a day or so apart? Right. It's it is weird. It is weird. Um, <laughs> because you're normally used to like doing the scout and everything and being done with them for a while. But I th think it's also cool at the same time, especially if you do lose, like you kind of like really hungry and focused, like, okay, like we got another opportunity to try to get these guys. So I think there's definitely pros and cons. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's still been like fun playing teams back to back. It feels like AAU kind of 
like <laughs> like a tournament. Any other questions for Nia? All right, thank you, Nia. Appreciate it. Yep. Am I? Yeah, yeah. You, you can have you can hop out. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now we will open it up to questions for Coach. Coach, what do you talk, tell your team coming out of that series? Um, you guys you really battled um, the last three quarters, that second second game, and came back um, just to do a one-point deficit, and then they went on a 16-0 run. So what do you tell the girls um, just coming out of the Fresno series? I just was really proud of our effort. Um, I thought our defense in the second game was really, really good, you know, until about midway through that fourth quarter. And um, I think we're getting better. Like Nia said, uh, the team continues to really try to do what we're asking them to do. They're coachable. Um, and I just, their effort, I just thought was unbelievable. Both games, they really competed and battled. And in the first game, you know, we were down by quite a bit and came back and cut it and had a chance in that game as well. And so to go and play the defending conference champions and they were at full strength, you know, and um, I, I think one of their best seniors, Al, Ellie Gomez has been kind of injured all year and she was, you know, herself in our series. So I feel like we got to play them when they were, when they were really good. And it gave us a look at what we need to do to improve, but also I think gives us a little bit of confidence that, you know, I feel like we can play with anybody in the conference. It's a matter of number one, believing we can win. And then number two, executing, because there's a few things here and there that we just need to do better to come away with wins versus just competing against these types of teams. Like you said, Ali Gomez had a great game and on top of the uh, Cavender sisters and Maddie Udy. So knowing that you guys kept up with them um, just for so long and had two pretty much great games, um, what is what are your hopes going into Wyoming? We just, we need to shoot the ball better. I mean, it's just hard when you're constantly you know, scratching and crawling, clawing away for any amount of points. You know, we've struggled to shoot the three this year. Um, we got great shots in that first game in the paint and just didn't finish in the fourth quarter. And so we're just going to continue to work with our team on being on balance and hunting for great shots and trying to help each other get to the best shots that each teammate is best at making. Um, and then we got to keep improving defensively, you know, because as the year goes on, everyone's going to get better with their team offense as they get more time together. So continuing for us to try to make it hard for people to score against us. And then the biggest thing is just continuing to have our team play hard to show up with a lot of energy and work really hard the night of the game. And, you know, we're talking a lot right now too, about like, we might not be getting the results we want, but it, you know, we're never going to get the results if we don't continue to work, you know? And so we have to stay committed and disciplined on the things that, we do every day in practice and they need to continue to stay disciplined with, you know, sleeping, eating and taking care of their bodies. Um, but for us, we just want to keep them in a great place, keep them playing hard and just continue to try to improve them individually and improve our team at the same time. I mentioned it with Nia earlier, but with Wyoming and their uh, second best scoring offense in the conference, but also the worst scoring uh, or second best scoring defense, but worst scoring offense. Do you feel like with that setup, what could potentially play out? Do you think that's a, a matchup that you could uh, envision yourself really hanging in there, uh, these two games coming up? Or, or what are your thoughts on that? Well, when I think of Wyoming, I never think of a team that has trouble scoring. <laughs> you know, they run motion and I, you're going to have to guard 20 plus screens possibly in one possession. And they're going to maybe make you defend them for 28 seconds. And if they get an offensive rebound, now you're going to play defense for a minute. They're extremely deliberate. They're well coached. Um, and I think they play with a lot of discipline. I don't think that the number of points that they've averaged is indicative of what they're capable of scoring. They have some new players and, you know, I think they were hit with some COVID stuff maybe right before the season and were shut down. So when people have limited practice time, especially running an offense like that, it just takes time to build chemistry and they have definitely shooters. They have capable shooters that can, you know, hit a bunch of threes and things like that. So I just, for me, I don't, I'm not giving that statistic a ton of energy from our end. Um, I do have a ton of respect for their defense. They do a great job every single year and they help each other. And I told our team today, it's going to be really hard to score in the half court unless we do things that really, really well. And if we don't, we're not going to score in the half court because they're that good. And so for us, it's important that we play at a high pace and keep great spacing. We have to set good screens. We can't, you know, take off dribbling without a purpose or try to go off one foot, 
against their half court defense. That's just all recipes for, you know, disaster. So, you know, we have to work on some things this week and get better, especially, you know, in our half court offense before we play them on Friday. Coach, what are some of the biggest areas that you've seen your team grow just over the last couple of weeks in the last couple of Mountain West series? Yeah, our team defense is a lot better. I think they're figuring out how to play with um, each other and new players and building rhythm. And just, um, we talked, I, th I think it was one of the home games before we started Mountain West, just about chemistry and rhythm and repetition. It just takes time to build and you kind of have a feel for where people are and you go through the set up and get it um, right now. We're trying to, you know, I think build and still learning how to help each other be better than we would be individually, if that makes sense. And so the more Did you freeze for everyone else or is that just me? Yeah, she froze for yeah. me too. Okay. I will shoot her a text, see if she can hop back in. So what happens when you get long winded, you just get kicked <laughs> off on <of> Zoom. So, <laughs> um, I don't know how much of that you caught, but I think like we're just ahead defensively than we are a little bit offensively. And I, you know, I'm hopeful that the more time we get together, the more we can continue to improve. And our goal this year, you know, is just to like continue to put ourselves in a position to win games, you know, and build with this group that we have. And I can't like tell you enough how hard this group is working. And I'm just so proud of them because there's so many unique challenges this year and uncertainties and they just are giving it everything they have. Any other questions? And coach, yeah, you're shooting a pretty decent percentage from the line, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's like 75%. Is there anything that goes into it or some reason you can point to as to why, hey, we're a really good free throw shooting team so far this year? And how could that serve you moving forward? Honestly, the first thing I think of when you say that is we were 10 for 20 on uh, Friday at Fresno and we lost by eight, right? Is that right, Katie, I think? Oh, and we are a good free throw shooting team. And honestly, if we make... If we shoot 75%, we win that game, right? Oh, anyways, um, I think that number one, we shoot them in practice and we always try to shoot them when we're tired. And then we ask them to make a hundred free throws on their own outside of practice every single week. And um, a coach can rebound, they can do it like on the side or whatever. And we ask them to do their routine. Um, if they come in for extra shooting, we just try to make it as game-like as possible. And the other thing is, I think people on our team have good mechanics. We don't have anybody that's like a poor mechanical shooter, I guess. So I just feel like with repetition and them being relaxed and confident when they go up there because they put in the work that that is a big reason why they do so well there. And then with that gap you have now in your schedule coming up with San Jose State having to back on out, is there a possibility now that that postponed Air Force series gets moved in there? Is that too much of a squeeze to try to get that in? Well, I've been told that the Mountain West may shuffle some things around because everybody is going to be affected by the loss of that series on their schedule. So there's a chance that the games that we have scheduled might get moved and they might plug us in to go to Air Force, maybe around Colorado State, because it would be in the same trip. But we haven't gotten final confirmation of that yet. Coach, can you talk about um, Haley's new promotion and how she's um, going to be helping the team with uh, player development? Yeah, I'm really excited for her. Obviously, I got the opportunity to coach her as a player and to keep someone that has played for you on staff and uh, knows your expectations and believes in your vision for the program, like to keep her as a GI is excited about and now to retain her and um, just reward her is how I look at it. Like if you can develop and reward and promote people from within, I just always think that's really cool. And for her, she's really bought into Nevada. She like loves that she's an alum. She loves the area and she just really wants to see this program have a lot of success. In her role this year, the NCAA has actually allowed us to do a little bit more with full-time positions. So Haley can be on the court this year. She can pass. She's actually able to do some stuff with recruiting, which is unique. And that's only because of COVID. I don't know if it will go beyond um, this season, but she'll be integral in, uh, 
scouting and she can still do a bunch with recruiting. Like if the rule goes back to the other way, like she can evaluate film and things like that and tell the coaching staff her feedback. Um, and she can do a lot with analytics and, you know, just creative content. So we're going to use her in a variety of ways. And what's so great about Haley is anything you need. She just, you know, whatever she can do to help the program, she's such a giver and very selfless. And, you know, I'm really happy that she's going to be staying on with us. Yeah, coach, and just how big is that too to have her? And she's someone who did just play so recently too. So, and she played under you, and she's you know a little bit closer in age with some of the girls on the team as well, being able to relate to some other things. Absolutely, and I think you know naturally players kind of go to the people they have stuff in common with, you know, and so you know, maybe they like the same kind of music or the same kind of clothes, that kind of thing. And also, you know, maybe that starts the relationship, but then, you know, players go through a lot of things. And so it's nice to know that the people that are on your staff are fully bought in and they believe in what you're doing. And you know, that they be, they'll be saying the right things to the players when the players need encouragement and kind of need some accountability. So, you know, having played for us, they're not going to ever come to her and be like, gosh, conditioning is really hard. And she's going to be like, well, tell me about it. I did it. You know what I mean? She, she will have experienced everything that they're being asked to do. And she can say, you know what, like it's worth it. And you know what, you're going to be okay. And you know what, you can do it. And so to have people firsthand that have gone through it, I think is, is pretty cool. And coach jazz on our staff, the same, you know, she played with at SIUE for uh, coach G and I, and so we have a couple people here that have like been through, you know, been through the hard stuff and had the success and can say, you know what, it really helped me in the long run.